I probably could have made a little bit more money, but I'm really happy with what it sold for. It went for a little bit more than I thought it would. Hello everybody, welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. My name is Kevin, we're in the Commonwealth cabin, and I had a slow day of sales, sort of. So yesterday I think we sold like 18 things and didn't make all that much money to be perfectly honest with you. Today we sold 12 things and made way more money than we did yesterday. So this is the kind of day I like, you know. Shipping's not bad. I have one tough to ship item. It's not all that bad. And we made a decent amount of money on it. But all the other stuff we made good money on and they're easy shippers. So this is the kind of thing I like, especially now that school is in session. And now that I have a bunch of new students that maybe didn't know uh, much about me. Um, some of them have figured out now that I have a YouTube channel. <laughs> and so if you're watching this, you have homework to do. It's due Friday, so you should probably... <laughs> I, it's am I a terrible teacher? I gave homework on the first one, just a little bit. It, it wasn't very much, I promise. <laughs> At any rate, had some cool sales today and a gift came in today and Turner's been bugging me. He wants to open it. I'll give you a little hit and came from the Junior Capitalist as a YouTube channel. We'll let you check that out. It was really kind of you. He did a uh, parody of Matt uh, Part-Time Picker's song the other day, and uh, I sung a little bit for it. The Homeschool Hustlers sung a little bit for that parody, too, although they hit the cutting room floor. But I got the uh, copy with them singing, so I uh, sent to my email. Maybe I'll post that. It'll be like a Rebel, a Rebel YouTube post. <laughs> at any rate, that was very nice of Ethan to do that, so thank you. And we'll show you that at the end of the video. I'm going to try to answer one question today. Actually, I'll answer two, but one specifically, and then one kind of generally. And that is a question about people asking about, about when I do auctions. And I'll answer that in just a second when I just show you what's, what's sold on auction for a really good amount of money. I probably could have made a little bit more money, but I'm really happy with what it sold for. It went for a little bit more than I thought it would, and I'm happy about it. And I'm going to let you take a look, but I got a couple things to show you first. Let's take a look. All right, I was trying to think back where I got these, and I'm pretty sure I got them on the uh, on the Commonwealth Picker channel at a garage sale where I got the small Halloween blow mold. I got that Garfield up there, and a couple of other things I think that sold today as well came from that sale. It was a really, really good sale. And if, if you go back to that one, I can't stop buying at this garage sale. I think I picked these up for two bucks, three bucks maybe. They're brand new shoes and they sold really quickly. I think maybe I undercut myself by a couple of bucks, but I mean, I comped them out, but the fact that they have this like pinkish purple color, I think it made them, made them worth a little bit more. I probably could have put them up for two, three more dollars, but they still sold for 30 plus shipping. So it's a decent little profit on a two, three dollar buy. All right, so here it is right here. These guys right here, I'll have to take them out of the bag. If you can believe this, this one for a hundred, let me look at it real quick, $171.09 plus shipping for these guys right here. And let me show them to you. There are 17 little figures, and I think, uh, I can't remember, 13, 14 masks, something like that. This is the Kenner masks that uh, I think they're from the mid 80s. 85, 86, I think, something like that, maybe 87. I think there's some from each year. And these guys were in that giant G.I. Joe lot, and I just started digging through them. I had never sold these before. I'd sold some G.I. Joes before. This probably doesn't go with that one, but... And I asked in a video, I'm like, hey, can you help me identify these vintage toys? And somebody said mask. I thought, oh, yeah. And so I looked them up, and I almost put all this stuff in one big lot because I just don't have the time to deal with them individually. And I put the micro machines in a lot and kind of separated them out a little bit. I was a little disappointed in the micro machine sale, although we still make great money. And we're getting over, this will put us over $1,000 at the unexpected jackpot because this is where we got it from. And I'll show you that in just a second. But these guys right here were a were something that was a pretty easy choice. I could have sold them off one by one researched each one to get the correct name and looked them up and it would have taken a long time and I could have made twice as much money doing it but I probably would have spent my guess is 10 to 15 hours doing it and when I calculate that out in my mind you know it's not even $20 an hour and that's kind of my limit you know I'm not going to really work too hard for under 20 bucks an hour if I wanted to do that I'd be a teacher 
At any rate, the, uh, I shouldn't say that. I'm not complaining. Who else gets three months off, five months off a year? Okay, this uh, these guys uh, sold really well, and I'm happy with the sale at that price. It's all pure profit at that point, and uh, I'm happy with these. And I don't think a viewer bought it. I had I think there were a couple viewers maybe who were bidding early, and that was it. I didn't publicize the auction because sometimes they kind of go awry a little bit. But I'm happy with this sale, and uh, I'll let you take a look at the total. All right, that brings the unexpected jackpot to $1,138. So that is really, really good. We still have some things to go. It'll probably get up to about $1,200, and we'll call it quits because the, the rest will be just stragglers. Although, you know what? I just remembered. I got a typewriter at that sale. That's a really nice typewriter, and I still haven't listed it. So maybe we'll keep going on that sale. It's not going to approach the, the Mount Plushmore sale, and it's not going to be as good as the Happy Little Accident sale. But this one was a great one and I just love it. All right, so before I show you this one, back to that auction for just a second. I wouldn't suggest doing auctions often. Here's the suggestion, and some of you guys who do auctions all the time uh, and gals out there, let me know when you do auctions and I'm gonna give you when I typically do them. So I do them basically on two occasions. When I'm trying to eliminate a massive amount of work that I don't wanna do and still get a decent amount of money, the second time is when I have an item that has no comps out there, or maybe has comps out there, but they're priced way too high, and I want to kind of feel something out, or I have an item, maybe there are comps, but mine's in great condition, and I want to kind of feel it out a little bit. Usually, I don't even do it then. It's usually only on an item that is basically not listed out there on eBay or I can't get a good handle on what the value is. So there's different options for different folks. You know, maybe there's something out there that you can acquire and you need the capital to acquire it in order to resell it. And so that's an option, but those are really the only two times. So this one, I've sold a few trains lately. We're in the pure profit at this point and I gave away a bunch of trains to our neighbor down there and this one, is going to be just about pure profit. Not quite, we, we are a little bit short of, uh, of hitting our $60 buy, um, but this is gonna get us there and be pure profit. This is an Atlas uh, in scale train. It's used, but it's in its package right here. I think I undercut myself a little. This sold pretty quick, which I'm fine with. I love stuff selling quick. I don't like regret it, but I do think I probably could have got a little bit more money for this. The sticker on it's $85, but you know, it's hard to find this stuff anymore. And this is from the Norfolk and Western line. It's the Train Master, and it sold, let me take a look. It sold for $60 plus shipping, so we're in about a $45 profit at this point, and we're able to gift a bunch of those trains away. So that's awesome, I love it. Okay, here we have a TI-84 Plus. And we're talking about undercutting myself. I thought I put shipping on this, but I didn't, and this really was my fault. It wasn't eBay playing tricks on me. TI-84 Plus in pretty good condition. No corrosion, and it does have writing here and some scuff marks. But I think being this time of year and the condition it's in, I could have easily got 55, maybe 55 plus shipping, and I didn't. I got 50, which is, you know, it's not the end of the world. I wish I would have had shipping on it like I intended because I think I would have got that pretty quick. But uh, I'm still happy with the sale, and let me show you just kind of a breakdown for you newbies out there how I break it down in my mind and what the actual numbers are profit on this. I paid five bucks and you'll see it at a sale coming up pretty quick. All right, so here it is, T84 plus 50 bucks came in. Should have been more, but that's all right. It's my fault. Cost was five bucks. I put 15% in fees at 750. It's not that much, but I put it in there just to cover different stuff, um, the boxes and whatnot. Shipping was $4.46. It's going all the way to Hawaii at the 12 ounce rate. So usually we could get a little closer, save a little bit, but not much. $33.04 profit, virtually no work. I think buying it, bringing it home, snapping some pictures, testing it a little bit, and uh, shipping it is max 10 minutes to make 33 bucks. Love that one. And it should be 38 because I, I listed it wrong. Speaking of me trying to be transparent about my mistakes there. And we all make them. It's okay. Uh, Super Mario Brothers. Here is a return. So this one got sent back to us here, and it happened. So this month I've had three returns, which is higher than, than usual, maybe one a month. I don't think any of them were my fault per se. You know, I'm willing to own up when I make a mistake, but I don't think I made a mistake on any of these. One of them ended up not working perfectly when it got there. It was actually to a viewer, 
but it worked perfectly here. And it just, I think it got rattled a little bit in a couple of the bars in the, uh, it was an alarm, it was the Fisher Price, Price alarm clock, if you remember me selling that. And a couple of the lights in there weren't working really well. So anyway, other than that, we don't have too many returns, but I just want to make sure out there because people get returns. Don't think I don't get returns. I get returns too. And uh, Super Mario Brothers, this one got sent back. Ordered by mistake is the reason for return. So I don't know. Maybe it was. Maybe they played it for a couple of days and sent it back. All right, one more thing in the back. I'm going to bring you back there and show you what's it up. It is something that I normally keep in the other room, but I pulled it out here when I sold the other day, and I'm going to show it to you right here. All right, Electrolux. This is the canister part. I like to sell off the parts of these, and this is going to be pure profit at this point. And the canister alone, in working condition, decent cosmetic condition, brought $40 plus shipping. It'll go out FedEx, and it's pure profit. It's really not that hard to ship. I think I have the exact right box that I need. I uh, grabbed it not too long ago because I knew I had this thing and I was just waiting for it to sell and it finally did, thank goodness. And a uh, little bit of a tough shipper compared to the rest of the things tonight, but I'm pretty happy with it. All right, and we are gonna answer a question, I think, show you a homeschool hustler store sale and then show you two sales inside and then show you what the junior capitalist says. All right, we have a homeschool hustler turn. Do you hear that cat out there? I think it's a cat. You think it's a cat or a chicken? You wanna see? All right, let's see. Oh my goodness, look. See that? Yeah, that's boots. Yep. I think she wants them. Come on. Turner, we sold a couple things out of your store. Yep. Who's that? Speaking of Garfield. cats. It's Garfield. Why did I let these cats in here? Huh? Look at them, looking for mischief. Gotta get them out, huh? All right, that's Garfield. Sold for $6.95 plus shipping. And it was from that one sale. It was from the, I can't remember what I called it. I couldn't stop buying at this garage sale. And we got this Garfield clock up there too for five bucks. It's awesome. Okay, so a little bit of profit there. And then we sold a couple things from Blaze and the Monster Machine. Yep. Isn't this a Blaze? Are my wine ones. Is that, who's that? Um, Zeg, Robot Zeg, whatever. Robot Zeg, and that's Blaze, right? Some yeah, kind I of Blaze. These. Oh, they're yours? Yeah, I saw Oh, them. okay. $20 plus shipping, buddy. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Yeah. Okay. And at the end of the video, we're going to come back and you can open up a, a package from yeah, somebody package. who has a YouTube channel sent us something, okay? Who's his name? All right, we'll see you at the end. I'll tell you at the end, okay? Bye. All right, bye. All right, sold an Under Armour shirt, size medium. These are like Under Armour, but made into antlers. So like two, two bucks into this. Sold for $10 plus shipping. Not an amazing profit, but I'll take it. Two Virginia plates, and this is going to a viewer. And I can't remember the sale, uh, the garage sale on Commonwealth Picker right offhand, but it was a fun one. There was a lady at this sale. I didn't buy these off of her. That was just cracking me up and she was so excited because when i get in a buying frenzy i just start looking around and buying and buying and buying and she loved it she's like oh this guy's a buyer and she just started to wheel and deal and start selling stuff got a bunch of harley stuff from her but these came from a different table and i got a bunch of plates some i kept and some i decided to sell off and some viewers started buying them and asking me to sign them and that's what happened here so this one's going out to jason he says hi kevin i've been collecting license plates for a while and i don't have one from virginia what better way to get one but from my favorite one of my favorite youtuber one of my favorite no, i'm kidding i love watching your channels i have learned so much in the last year or so keep up with the history lessons okay uh, Jason. Awesome, Jason. Thank you. I appreciate it very much. And uh, I think you sent me a message, I think, and asked me to sign them. So I'll have to go back. And there was one other message that got sent with one of these in, uh, with one of these Enaman back here. And I have uh, already uh, since replied to it and I don't have it. But at any rate, thank you for that. And I am going to uh, sign these for you and send them off. I appreciate it. $14 free shipping. I think I paid two for them. So not a huge profit, but originally I thought I was going to put them up in a cabin and I'm like, you know what? I got so many of these things. Might as well just list them. So we're making, I don't know, about $9 profit on them. All right, one going to Matthew, one going to Tracy, and one going to Christy. I see no messages on the purchases, but I feel like Tracy, you sent me a message and I, re I responded, but I don't have it. So I apologize. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy these, and I hope these things get some things moving out of your eBay store for you. We appreciate it, and we'll uh, send them your way. All right, that's it from in here. So we're going to head back out there, and I think Turner 
wants to show you what he got from the junior capitalist. So thank y'all for being here as always, and we'll see you next time. All right, Turner, come on, take a look. This came from a YouTube viewer. Go ahead and start day. Okay. And it's also a YouTuber. Oh yeah. my gosh. <laughs> you like that? Check this out. There's it's some stickers awesome. in here, and here it is, the junior capitalist. And here's his channel right here, y'all. <laughs> He's done channel reviews. Uh oh, what you got there? It, He's the talking, huh? It says hit it, so I hit it. <laughs> <laughs> he has done some reviews of. Well, here you go, right here. Part time picker review. Hey. He's done one of John Cincinnati Picker and uh, Lonnie as well. I think that's it. And he sent us all this amazing stuff and some stickers. You like that? That's going to go on our sticker wall in the back. Yeah. Pretty cool. And right here, y'all, if you want to see, although I don't think the Homeschool Hustlers made it on this video. Uh, they made it on another one, but I don't think they made the final cut right here. The uh, music video with Matt Part-Time Pickers. Remember when you did your song? Yeah. Yep, and I'm on there, too. So if y'all want to go over there and check that out, it yeah. would be awesome. So, any rate. That's pretty cool. Keep yeah, looking, man. There's some more. good stuff in yes. here. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Who's that? Um, I, um, this is just something. That. You remember. It's from Cars 2, isn't um, it? I think that this will. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, look at this. Dale Earnhardt Jr. No, no, no. What am I talking about? That's Dale Earnhardt. It's a, it's a boat. So cool. It's oh, yeah. What's that? Oh, Sissy might like that, but she's not here, is she? No. No. Oh, and a plate. Look at that. Ooh. I got a plate. That'll go in the back. This is hard. It's, hard. it's got your sticker on it. And one more thing, we got a mug as well. Check this out right here. Mug. And this is something we got. I mean, this is awesome stuff. Look at this. Made for a mug. You have to tell me where you got this. I'm curious. It's a huge mug. That one's definitely not going first class. Book. Check that out. And on this side. That is one heck of a mug. Awesome, Ethan. I don't know. Hey, do you want to tell Ethan thank you? Thank you, Ethan. It's really, really nice, isn't it? Yes. Yes. Oh, and you... <laughs> oh, that makes me feel good. All right, y'all, go check him out. Thanks. I have a question here from Jane. Sort of a question. I... Well, it's a question, I suppose. I was told that shipping is okay to all 50 states, but I see other sellers selling to only the contiguous states. Uh, but first of all, if you're one of my students watching this instead of doing what you're supposed to be doing, at least you can learn what contiguous means. It means connected, touching, um, all within a common border. There you go. That's contiguous. All right, <laughs> back to uh, reselling. Is there something special about Alaska and Hawaii, she asks. Well, I think there's probably a lot special about Alaska and Hawaii and all... Uh, resist the history of both <laughs> but the basic point here is most people who do that unless I'm missing something and y'all can tell me below are shipping are doing free shipping and so free shipping they're eliminating those two places because the shipping costs are going to be the highest by far so as far as the contiguous states go some people also include Puerto Rico in that when they uh, say I'm not going to ship to wherever so here's the deal the reality, at least the way I see it, is if you're doing calculated shipping on an item, I don't see why you would have the need to do such a thing. So, Jane, hopefully that answers your question. If you're doing calculated shipping, I think you should include all of them. I sell a lot of things to Hawaii. Well, I don't sell a lot. I often sell things to Hawaii. Matter of fact, maybe even in this video, I think the... Uh, TI-84 Plus, if that's in this video, sometimes it's hard for <laughs> me to remember because I'm doing this during my lunch break and at any rate, I think that's going to Hawaii. So, anyway, hope that helps, Jane. Thanks. Bye. Hey, quick question from Kim about thermal printers. She asks, uh, what printer do I use? She's looking to buy a thermal printer. So, first, I would love to just plug my affiliate links down below and just say, you need to go get the Rolo printer but I can't for this because of another part of your question that you asked. So I, I would just promote promote the, th the thermal printer, period. I think it's awesome. I love it. I don't think it matters which one you have. If you're doing any kind of volume, I think it's the right choice for 99% of people out there. Now, if you're just selling a few things here or there, 
it may not be worth the investment. It probably isn't. But if you start to ramp it up, I love thermal printers. It was a game changer for me. I've never used the other ones, so I can't do a comparison, which is painful for a history teacher doing those uh, comp civ stuff all the time. That's what that formula is about, by the way. <laughs> anyway, I will say this. The second part of your question, and I would love some other folks to comment below and to, and to give her some suggestions. I would say that in your case, because you said you print directly wirelessly from your iPad, and then in, in that case, I'm not going to recommend the Rolo printer because it's not wireless. At least, not that I'm aware of, they haven't come out with a wireless one. Um, I do know that the College Picker, all one word, has done tutorials on thermal printers, and I believe the one, if I'm looking at the screen right here, that he suggests for a wireless one is a brother printer. So go to the College Picker and look up his tutorials on the best wireless printers, thermal printers. And I think he'll give you a great answer. If some of our viewers don't give you a good answer below, if, if you're a viewer and you use wireless printers that are thermal printers, which ones do you have? Leave them in the comments. Thanks. Poor little thing. I'm, this is our new arrival. We're not quite sure where he or she came from, but the girls have been taking care of it the best they can, although she's kind of skittish. Cute little thing. I don't know if you can see her tail. You can't, but it looks like it's gonna fall off, so we're gonna go take it on Monday. Ooh, poor little thing. That's so good. She's a lot more brave now. Ooh, Come on. And hopefully find a new home.